yeah, it's uh, finishing up our preseason is, has been great. You know, we obviously with 11 new players and trying to get them acclimated to the schedule that we had, uh, we feel good at um, some of the pieces that we were able to put together and, and play as a unit. But we were also able to try some different players and look at some different lineups. And, you know, we've got a, a really talented group that continues to improve and um, just really happy with them. And, they're fun to be around and, and a great group to coach. And now we get to start um, after going 8 0. We get to go up to Kansas to kick off our Big 12 play. And they just moved it from ESPNU to ESPN2. I think it's a testament to where the game's growing. Um, I think we, you saw last week they set two attendance records with 15,000 at Nebraska and Creighton, and then uh, 16,000 at Wisconsin with Florida. So the game continues to grow, and excited that you guys are here supporting us. Um, Jared, I'm kind of wondering how good was it for y'all to get some chances to test your depth, especially in a game like UC Davis where, you know, Logan sits the entire match. How big was that for y'all to get to test that depth? Yeah, to be able to test our depth is great. Uh, we have players that have been knocking on the door for pushing for starting positions. Uh, we have, uh, you know, two or three players that are just right there. And it's challenging as our coaching staff kind of looks at the different things that we need to do to, to be successful for conference and also at the end. But... There's players that deserve that. So I would imagine throughout the season, we'll start seeing some players playing some matches and maybe rest some players. Your left, Cedric. Jared, when you have 11 new players, you never know what when they're going to meld, when the chemistry is going to kick in. Are you shocked to be 8-0? I know you got talented guys, but uh, given the schedule you had at the beginning, 8-0 uh, is kind of kind of surprising. Yeah, it's it's it was. They mesh really well early on, and I think you know some of them were here in the in the spring, and they did a great job, Logan and the captains, of just getting everybody to connect in the in the summer. And for female sports, that's really important. Um, you know, they spent time in the lake, they spent time eating around town, seeing different places, but they made a concerted effort to make sure the freshmen were part of that, and the freshmen fit in really, really well. And you know, they've all got um, unique personalities that are are making the people around them better. You know, they're not self-inflicted and, and worried about their own personal um, success. They're, they're really promoting one another, and that's really unique in the women's game. And I think I'm really proud of them for, for being that mature. You might have just answered it. The, the fact that you have so much talent and, and any of these young ladies would be doing big things in a different program, have, it sounds like you've seen that they've been very selfless. Um, to, to fit into this this team? Yeah, it's been a lot of our conversations as a coaching staff. I think, you know, luckily we have a very experienced group with Eric and David and that, you know, our communication and transparency is really important. So it's something that we're discussing. We're having meetings every day with players and trying to define roles and let them know that how well they're doing and how lucky they are to, or we are to have them here. Coach, you talk about you know growing the sport and the exposure, ESPN going to another network to get it more exposure. Do you think that Texas volleyball will need to go to like a Moody Center to bring in more fans? Have we maxed out the Gregory Gym? Well, if you were on my phone call on Saturday morning, I was already planning something. My goal is to set the record right now, 16,800. So I got to figure out our schedule for next year. But you know, the goal is to you know the Moody Center doesn't even hold enough. So I, we don't know if it's. I need to talk to our ID first to see exactly what direction they want us to go. But is it the American Arena in Dallas the night before OU Texas football against Oklahoma? Or is it, you know, I had a talk this week with uh, the, the Globe, the Texas Rangers, so they have 40,000 and they're interested in hosting us. So I think the sport is so big in the state of Texas that we could really push that envelope and show people how great it is. Do you and your staff and your team, do you even dare talk about going undefeated? Or is no. that just, just not at all? <laughs> trying to figure out what lineup to put together. Um, <laughs> You're 8 no. Yeah, no, Yeah, I mean, that's all fun for the media. Yeah. You know, like, look, at the end of the day, I'm going to be critiqued in terms of us winning and losing. And that's what, you know, my vol new volunteer coach that came on, she called me the first night after our first match. And she's like, I just realized that you probably never sleep as a head coach. And, you know, there's so many things that we're managing and looking forward. It's... You know, you're looking for, you know, where are the next pitfalls or things that could come up for that. So that's the concern for, for me is can we keep this team united? Can we keep them going? Can we get them better today in practice? Uh, can we get them to understand the needs that, that we need to do? Because we have 
an immense amount of statistical information. Volleyball is a lot like Moneyball, or you know, we looked at seven different statistical categories of the differentials and what we need to do by personnel. And now that we've been able to play some people to really identify what our best lineups may be. Chip on your left. With 11 new players, who has surprised you most in any aspect? And what area are you constantly harping on, even though you're 8-0? No? Well, I think there's been two players that have really stood out for us. Or that, I mean, there's been a ton of them. They've all stood out because they're all super talented. But you know, I think Emma Halter, the, the, the freshman defensive specialist, came in. You know, we knew that she was good, but you never know how they approach uh, the game. You don't know how they approach the game with so many veterans on the floor. And you know, she just came in fearless and played extremely well and you know, really opened up her eyes. I think Bella has come in and done a really nice job with the transfer from Cal. You know, we knew that she was pretty talented, but we only watched her on film. Um, and we're super impressed with her blocking the development she had coming in. Hey, Jarrett, what about Zoe? What has she brought to the team? Zoe's a connector. Uh, she has a huge heart. She's a very loving kid that just loves being a part of a program right now. And so when you have someone that really controls the backcourt, uh, not only as a, not from the volleyball skills, but from the communication standpoint, she brings so much trust to that. And I think she brings an, an aura around her that everything's going to be OK, and we're going to go do this, and we're going to do it by, by our team standards. And you know, she has a, a remarkable level of effort with the amount of film that she watches. You know, she always wants extra reps. Uh, and she's pushing us right to the, to the brink of the time management piece of it all. But she's, uh, she's, a, she's a connector for us. Coach, you talked about statistics and data analysis and Moneyball. What are some of the statistics that never show up on a stat sheet that we don't know but you know that make Texas volleyball the elite program that it is? That's just off the charts. Yeah, maybe we should just do like a, not today, but like maybe we could do like a 10 minute cheat sheet. I could put up some stuff for you guys to kind cool. of see, like to see, you know, like, you know, you're looking at serve receive numbers. Everybody complains about service errors and that, but, you know, when you see what we're citing out when we pass the ball to the net, it's astronomical. Like we're above 70s, and so teams have to serve tough against us, and they have to take some risks. Um, you know, we're looking really at our transition game right now, how to Im increase those numbers uh, attacking-wise, so when balls are dug further off the net or from different positions. And then you know, we're looking at short string versus long string setting, and how do we get a little bit more efficient and balance our net a little bit more at that. And then obviously, the big component is the serve and pass game. I think we've, you know, we, early on, we had such big competition, we were just trying to put our some of our systematic stuff together, we were trying to look at some things, and then we found out, hey, these are the areas that we need to improve on. And we worked on those over the last couple of weeks, and now we're going to start hitting on some other areas that can take us over the top, hopefully. Back to your left, Dan. Um, Jared, I'm kind of wondering, what are your thoughts about how Sage has set this offense this year? And then going back to last year, why did you want to recruit her when you had two setters on your roster already? Yeah, I think, you know, Sage. Is talented. She's a very athletic young woman, um, and I think she comes from a lot of success as a setter. She had a lot of success at, at Utah, and um, when we saw her come in the portal, like we needed another one that was uh, very proficient in that position. Uh, you know, in case something happened to Jenna last year, and you know we were going to have those two compete, and they did, and Jenna won that out. But you know, Sage has now really developed and got a different confidence about her, and is you know a really good blocker, and I think that's. The big piece is we're not having to scheme around um, her blocking anymore. We can play a little bit more. allows us to be better defensively. We're getting more touches. But for her, it's, it's been so fun to see her growth and her development. And that's why you coach. Is she's gotten a lot more confident. I think she's been pursuing the game at a different level. And she is significantly better than she was last year. Uh, is Kansas still 8-1? I think they're 8-2. They 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 yeah. Ten to. Yeah. Ten to two. Okay. Would you talk about uh, what you expect from them, and if you'd also size up the Big Twelve? Yeah, the Big Twelve's had a really good um, preseason. I think there's, you know, Texas Tech has had a really good run. Obviously, Kansas, Kansas State have done a nice job, and we're excited about it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging conference for us. Uh, it gives us the opportunities with the number of matches also to get some extra training in and development, uh, which we feel always helps us out. But you know, Kansas is a strong team. Um, it's, a, it's a tough little gym to play in. It will be sold out. 
it's fun because right now wherever we're going, we're sending attendance records. And um, you know, I'm really good friends with Ray, the coach there, and he always does a great job preparing his team. So we'll have to be ready to battle. Kansas, um, they've got good attackers and good arms from all over the over, all over the court, and um, you know they're starting to ball control well, and um, I think they've got a pretty pretty good serve and pass game too. Anything else for Jared? One more, oh, Danny, and then over to Tim. <coughs> um, kind of going back to what you were talking about earlier with the attendance, um, you know what? Sixteen thousand is obviously a lot. Um, would you be comfortable giving up a marquee home game? Would you be comfortable giving up? The home field advantage that you have in Gregory for you know a match to you know possibly get that many people in too. For sure, uh, I mean we're not opposed to going to Moody once a year. We've already been talking about it in the last spring to, to look at what that match is, um, but we're also looking to see how big we can get it. You know I, I think we have that opportunity. People around the country are starting to realize how athletic our women are, how fun the game is. Nobody comes to our game and says that's a terrible event to go to. They usually walk out, wow. I never knew it was this type of the speed of it and the um, the physicality of it. It's completely different watching it on TV than it is live in person. And I think the the word of mouth marketing has done a really good job. And now you're starting to see it internationally get to be very big. Poland had the World Championships and they sold out for three weeks and 12 minutes of a 16,000 seat arena that was playing three or four times a day. So communities that have really promoted this, you know, you've seen it with Wisconsin, you've seen it with Nebraska, you've seen it with Hawaii, you've seen it here at Texas, you know, there's, it continues to grow and there continues to be this supply and demand that is, is fun to see. And now TV, you know, they had, they were extremely, they went on ESPN with no advertising for Kentucky and Louisville and had very good ratings and they were super excited. Uh, they just let us know this morning that they're going from ESPNU to ESPN2 for a match against Kansas. So now the media is starting to catch on. I think it's more about how do we educate uh, the non-volleyball fans and understand what this game is about and how it works. Um, I feel that when I, my wife is Italian, when I bring her to the football games and she's asking me all these questions. So it's similar, similar to that. You just got to train them a little bit to, to understand the game and why it's so fun and, and how it all works. And I think maybe next time we can do something. I'll maybe I'll bring a TV up here and show some of the stuff with our person. If you guys want to, you can stay if you want to. If not, and learn the game a little bit. Coach, uh, beach volleyball, where is that going to be held? Where are we going to bring in the sand for that? And are you going to be the coach? And if you don't sleep now, you're really not going to be sleeping in. Yeah, it's a good question. It's an exciting thing. It's really exciting. I'm super excited for it. You know, Texas has, I think, the best beach programs in the country. And there's a super amount of talent. I think, you know, it's been something that we've been pushing for a long time. And when the boss came to me and asked me if we'd want to do this and are you ready to kind of get on board, um, it happened really fast. And so we're trying to kind of manage that right now. Uh, we're not in a huge rush. We're going to use our indoor team this spring, and we'll go play in some matches. And it's a completely different game. So our fans have to realize that when we go play the beach teams, we're going to get peed up pretty well. Um, but it, it, it'll be great. And then we'll probably hire a coach sometime next spring, and then we'll start onboarding and getting that acclimated. We're still working on all the logistics. I mean, right now we're trying to figure out how to make our uniforms and what schedule are we playing this spring, and, and what does that look like. So there's so much going on. And additionally, on Saturday against Oklahoma, uh, when we get here, we have our 10-year reunion with our 2012 national championship team. So they'll be all here in, in town and celebrating that with all their kids and family. I think TCU has it and uh, Corpus Christi, I believe is the other one. Yeah, it's starting to grow. It's starting to grow. They're the, it's, the sport of volleyball is just blowing up everywhere. And so this will be, you know, it's, it's, it's organized differently. I think there's six scholarships. They're not head count. Um, you know, we'll have probably 25, 26. It's just right now trying to get the word out that we're not doing anything with it because all the recruits and coaches are calling me 24-7 or emailing me, like, and we can't respond. But it's, I'm not, we're not onboarding anything until probably around May or June. Another one from Chip, unless it's about beach volleyball. <laughs> um, Sark's never been to Lubbock. You got any advice for him? Lubbock, it's uh, it's grown a little bit. It's, yeah, it's 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 a wild place to play, and I think it's it's make, it's what makes college athletics fun. And um, he'll be ready and he'll embrace it. But it, it should be a good matchup.